Ooh. I gotta zoom it in a little bit because I want you guys to see my my daughter's blanket. You guys, you guys, if you've watched my videos, you've seen my daughter's blanket before. I always have my daughter's blanket with me. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video up to this point. Basically, what I want to talk to you about, wrote down a couple of key points. We are going to talk today about what I've learned along the way. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. What I've learned along the way. DJing. Okay. Now, um, I recorded this video earlier. I realized that I was taking too long. So I'm going to talk a little bit fast and maybe slow down on some of the key points as I'm doing now. But what I'm going to do is make this a three part series. It's going to be what I learned along the way as far as DJing and also what I've learned along the way as far as divorce. And then we'll see, and that'll be on a later video, It'll probably be really soon, I'd say within the next couple days. And then a few days after that, we'll also have another one called What I Learned Along the Way, Life. And those might spike some uh, conversation. And you're more than welcome to comment down below. I'd be happy to. Um, what I'm going to be doing tomorrow's video is going to be a Q&A of questions that I've been asked throughout these months or year I think I've been gone and we'll do kind of a Q&A of questions that people have asked me um, personal and not and I will go over those and then if you guys want to be part of that video or future Q&A videos go ahead and comment down below in this one all right so let's get right to it what I learned along the way as far as DJing now what I learned, let me first start real quick on where it was. So I started out DJing in clubs, right? Uh, DJing for some friends, house party in clubs. That's kind of, and I went into weddings. Um, what I, I went away for a long time. Uh, CDJs came in and scared the crap out of me. CDs were like, what's going on? I was, you know, I was just enjoying needles and, you know, and stuff like that. So I didn't understand. I got scared and I left for a long time. Um, moving fast forward, I uh, decided to get back into DJing weddings. Um, me and my ex-wife got married in our home that we bought together. And why I wanted to revisit DJing again was because my first initial dream, my goal was to give her a fairy tale wedding, give her one of the greatest experiences uh, a bride can have as a wedding, is beautiful wedding, right? And I wanted to know the best vendors and I wanted to know the best people. Um, in my area. So I actually started mobile DJing because of that reason. Well, that didn't happen, right? So, um, another thing, another good thing is my, uh, couple days, a couple of years later, I, we were going to, we were married, we were going to have a family and my, you know, a, a child was going to be coming soon. And, uh, it so happened to be my daughter. It was a daughter, you know, and I wanted her to experience the elements of love and things that surrounded love why why that was so so important to me was because my mom i reflected when i knew my daughter was coming into our lives i reflected on my life and i reflected on things that i've learned or did not learn along the way and what could make me better as a person what i can tr can transition or contribute to my uh, my daughter and uh, so that way uh, we don't make the same mistakes or and or um, you know uh, you, you just want to make the generation after you just better right we just want to provide more uh, not just uh, financially um, you know materialistically but also emotionally mentally we want to provide more and my mom never um, really knew love she never really knew love and and it wasn't her fault, you know, she um, she loved us, she loved myself, my brother, and her immediate family. Uh, but some of the worst things that can ever happen to a woman or a human being, um, several different things, they all happened to her. And it wasn't just once or twice or three times. It's happened multiple times, different people, and it was, she's experienced some of the worst experiences that anybody can ever experience, my mom. And um, I'll be talking about another video about my mom in a later video. But what I'm talking about right now is she did not really experience love to its fullest. And so I felt like maybe there was something missing there in the transition to us, to her kids. 
and uh, I she did the very very best that she could um, you know I love love and love is a beautiful thing and I love everything that has to do with love and family and friends and connecting and loving yourself loving others and loving God and all those other things but um, I know there was something that was missing there and I just wanted to fill that space because that's a very important thing to have and to share with your uh, with the generation coming after you so with that said, I wanted to go back into mobile DJing for uh, many reasons. Most importantly, to have my daughter to be a part of that growth of me being in weddings and surrounded by, you know, loving moments and the elements of love that come with weddings. That was really important for me, for her to see that. Um, along the way, what I learned is DJing and being a dad was she would see these fairy tale things and I, I would talk to other guys and hear things and they're yeah, that's just fairy tale that's not real life you know they, they women fall in love with this this whole idea of you know love and this and that and family and it and real life is like this well you know it's okay to have a child like you know fantasy that way it's good to think those those things you know it's healthy it's okay uh, it's, it's okay to have an imagination their children and uh, even if you're an adult and you're a woman and you're thinking about those wonderful, beautiful moments of a wedding or falling in love with somebody, that's okay and it's healthy and it should be okay. Um, so I wanted my daughter to experience those things. Um, and on the, along the way, I basically wanted to share with her a little bit of the business aspect of things as well too. For example, there would be like, let, let me just, a very common thing, like she said, oh, that looks so shiny and pretty, her dress, and I say, yes, you see how this light shines on the dress? Now let's take it away. And she's like, oh, no, 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 I like the light better. It looks so shiny, sparkly, and pretty, Papa. Well, yeah, baby, now this is why we want to provide this for them, because they want to see the shiny, sparkly, and pretty, too. They want to feel that, too. You see how it makes you feel happy? And that's what daddy's doing. Daddy's job is to give this to them and they have to pay for it. So that's what daddy's doing. Do you understand? And um, yes, she did. She did understand. And those that's just one little example. But those are a bunch of little things that along the way that I was showing her. Two sides. There's love and it's pretty. But there's business also. And we got to charge and we got to take their money. And not being rude, not not, but it's a business. You have to have a business. You can't just give things for free, or else you're not a business. Uh, you're just a hookup. So, with that said, we're gonna move right along. What I learned along the way is stay reading your crowd's responses. Stay reading your crowd's responses. Um, don't let the requesters dictate. The direction that you are going to go. I have I've been uh, accused of doing that too. I, I've done it myself. I've let the requesters kind of take control, and it loses. You lose the night. You lose the night. You, you got to dictate how you're. You got to read them. You got to read them. And reading can be. It needs to be in a completely different topic or video. I'm not even going to touch the subject right now because I will need to be so precise and defined about reading and what I need to explain to you because it is extremely important. I hear a lot of DJs talking about this, talking about this, talking about this, but there is a, those are specific things. You need to almost know what that person's thinking, what they're going to say, how they're going to respond, and whether you just need to, there's a lot of things that you can find out by just reading somebody's movements, their eyes, their facial expressions, their neck movements, their, you know, things of that nature. There's a lot of things like clo they close up, they get excited, they, they put their shoulders back, they drink a glass. That Those are all things you need to read. You know, the, the attempt to get up, the getting up, the shaking the dancing, the calling their friends, the screaming, the yelling. There's a whole process. So reading your crowd is extremely important. And I, I take it very, very serious. And when I let go and I let the requester do it, you lose the crowd. You're done. What I learned along the way also is 
stop trying to do everything on your own. Stop. Stop trying to do everything in one night. I, I've, I've been accused of this too. That's why I speak of this because I, 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 I want to use myself as an example. Running the photo booth, DJing, uh, doing cocktail hour in the other room, um, the ceremony set up in the other, uh, managing the music, during the timelines of the walk, whatever they need to, whatever the details they want. They want one song for the ceremony. They want 10 songs for the ceremony, whatever. And you know, I don't mean to be shady about it like that, but I'm just saying there's, it can be like that. And trying to manage all these elements of setting up, setting up the monogram, setting up the cake, the cake, uh, you know, lighting, the, the, the pin spotting, the, the, there's so many different things. Um, also emceeing on the microphone, extremely important. You should do more than just ladies and gentlemen and you know, all these other things. You, you gotta, there's, there's more to it, there's more to it. With that said, hire somebody. Get your buddy to help you. If they can do it for free, wonderful. That's a great buddy. Uh, thank you, you know, take him out to lunch. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, bring his kids uh, toys for Christmas or something like that. You know, that's great. But hire somebody. And if you're doing it to take all the money and be greedy, you really need to be out of this business. Um, you know, I went into this business because I, for, for loving reasons, I think, because I, I love, I loved seeing, I still, to this very day, I cry every time I see the I do's. I cry. What I learned along the way as far as DJing is, you know, if you're doing this for, um, to, you know, take all the money for the night, for the evening, you want to be kind of, I call it a little bit of greed. Um, if you, you're trying to do everything in one night to, you know, to get that whole paycheck, uh, that's that's really not what you should be doing it for. Or, or you, sh if you're probably, um, you're not charging enough, and so you really, really need that, you know, money that you're charging. So you need to charge more. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I, I know we've heard this before, but I hope that you can take something out of what I'm about to tell you a little bit differently than what you've consistently heard this about charging more. It is extremely important that you start doing this. Listen to me carefully if you're a DJ. I want you to, at this very moment, this guy who has gone and come back, literally saw the white light and came back, is telling you this for a reason. <laughs> Raise your prices right now, please, please stop, wait, do not wait another day. Raise them right now. If you have a uh, $50 item here, raise it to 60. If you have a $500 item over there, raise it to 600. If you have this, that's, raise them now. Do it now. Don't, when you finish this video, raise your prices. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you with, with all of my heart and soul, do it. It will make things better for you along the way. Let me tell you why. I, I raised my prices right away when I got the picture. When I, get, I get the picture real fast. I, I'm, I, I feel like I do. I feel like I get the picture. If I don't, let me know. If there's somebody out there that says, hey, you know, you didn't get the picture this one time, let me know. But I typically can get things real fast. Like if I go on a first date or something like that, and, you know, there's like some, uh, you know, I'm, I'm reading her like, I, like a DJ would read people. I get it real fast. I'm, I'm out of there if need be. I ain't going to waste my time. I ain't going to waste my time. So raise your prices. As soon as you raise your prices, what you're going to notice is that, holy shit, you're getting paid this much, you actually can go ahead and hire someone to help you, right? So raise your prices. That leads me into the last uh, segue into what I've learned along the way. So let's say DJ1 goes and hires DJ2 to come and help him, right? Because he raised his prices. So he comes and helps him. 
and DJ2 tries to network with DJ1's vendors at the event and hand out business cards and, and try to hustle a gig. Well, let me tell you something. There is nothing more gratifying and more satisfying than to hustle and grind on your own time. Listen to me again. Hustle and grind on your own time. Okay? You would have never met that person that gives him, DJ1, gigs all the time or he has a good connection or relationship with. You would have never met that person if it wasn't for DJ1. So you need to respect that connection because you know what? DJ1 will keep coming to you and come and asking you for help. And so he pays you this much. You don't need to go and step on his toes or step over him to go try to get his gigs. Don't do that. Here's what I want you to do. If you don't, let's say you don't even know DJ one, right? And you're DJ two. Go to these locations, go market yourself, meet and greet people, talk to them, say, I'm here for your service. I would like to service your customers like we used to do back in the day. Guess what? It still works. That is hustling and grinding on your own time. And that is satisfying. And that I tip my hat to you. So do that, okay? And I've had, I have never, mark my word, here, record this right now. I have never hustled and grinded on someone else's time or dime or customer or contract or vendor. That's why I've kept the relationships that I've had and I'm very proud of them. I've had guys give me access to their private locations, um, you know, companies constantly repay me, you know, uh, sending me out checks because I have a specific job they hired me to do. Rocky, we need you to do lighting over here. We want it done this way. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Come right up. I go over there and you know what? I go straight to it and I get my job done. I don't go try to pull contracts and hand my cards out and this, 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 and that. I was hired over here with, and they trusted me to do that. These companies trusted me to be professional and not try to take business from them or step on their toes. If other people ask you that for business, that's great. You know what I'm saying? But you want to stay straight with, with this company that hired you. Okay. Always be that way. Be honest and trustworthy. All right, uh, with with other people that you work with in, in, in this industry. There is no reason for you to be stepping on your toes. You need to hustle and grind on your own time. When they, these companies would hire me or this company, a couple companies would hire me, I would go in there and go do the job that they asked me to do. Go in there, get it done. I would always provide just a little bit more to show them my, my appreciation and I'd let them know. They would, thank you, Rocky, that's great. That's all I wanted, that and the paycheck. And I get in there, go in there, and I do my job. Get in there, go in there, do my job. See how this works? You stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. See how that works? And I kept coming back, and I kept coming back, and they kept hiring me, and they kept hiring me. But if you don't stay in your lane, and you veer off track, they see that. They don't like that. Well, guess what? You ain't coming back because you, you, you're not following direction. You're not staying in your lane. So that's what I like to finish with. This is what I've learned along the way as far as DJing. I'm sorry I rambled so much. Oh my goodness, the time on there. Thank you for listening to me. I hope that you've got something out of this. I hope you like the video. I look forward to one tomorrow and the future ones that will be coming up. What I learned along the way as far as divorce. What I learned along the way as far as life. And most importantly, this one I'll take some time to work on. What I learned along the way is being a dad, father, the greatest experience of my life. So I'm going to go ahead and close this off. Please, again, I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you again and again and again. You don't understand. And I will make a video to help you understand how important it is that you subscribe to this channel. You hit the like button. It really does help out 
and I will explain to you how it is helping me out in detail, me specifically, um, because I, I'm, I, hey, I'm an open book, and thank you so much for, uh, guys, let me just let you go. Love and respect all people and all things living. Take care. Bye-bye.